Kyle, um, we'll just get started this evening, the same we have in our previous chats, just talking about the current situation and COVID. Now, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, the restrictions are going to lift. Uh, how have you been keeping yourself sane over this past uh, few weeks? I suppose, like every other man, probably just, I was doing five Ks and stuff, and the time was getting worse. Yes. <laughs> but no, look, I've been lucky enough to get a bit of gym equipment from a football club whenever I was living in Arbo, and I was doing a bit out the back few bits of runs and stuff around the roads locally and stuff like that. There wasn't much more you could do. The pitch and stuff was closed, so just a few runs, gym sessions and stuff yeah. like that. How did you find the aspect where you're training by yourself all mm-hmm. of a sudden? Aye, that's tough. Like It, it is tough, uh, mentally tough. And you know yourself, whenever you're training with a group of men or even training with, with two or three, you, you say to yourself, you'll always go an, an extra wee bit. Where Whenever you're training by yourself, you, you tend to leave a wee bit short, I, I think. And I probably myself being the same, like it was, you never get the full 100%. You think you're doing, you know, Obviously, you're doing plenty, but you're not doing the, the extent that you would be doing when you're training with a group of players. You always push yourself up even more. Uh, it's, it's probably something, you know, you've had that huge standard, you know, being up at uh, drone training for the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Is there any less pressure this year or are things different, you know, that you're preparing for the season ahead? Probably, in our boat? probably I, you know, like you don't, the expectation of, you know, you're going in with, with a mindset of playing for Tyrone. You say to yourself, oh, you know, this is where I want to be. I want to be starting in the Tyrone team. I want to be, you know, if I'm not starting, I want to be coming on. And so now you have that bit more freedom. Now you go back to play with, with my club. And, you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to be starting, not going to be taking off. So the expectations probably a, a me give me a bit more confidence, a bit more freedom to probably go and express myself where you probably play within yourself that wee bit more whenever you're, you know, you're thinking, I need to do this to impress the manager. Where... I'm coming now to playing with your club, you know, playing for Arbo from a 16 to start the senior championship. So you're going to be there playing, you know. So the expectation is probably not as high. You know, I still put a high expectation on myself, but in terms of you're probably more relaxed, I would say. And, you know, if, if you don't mind me asking, what led to the decision um, of, of sort of walking away from the drone pan? Was it a was it sort of mutual feeling or you just sort of thought, you know, I've done my time. I'm ready to come up to Arbo again. Or... Um, it's probably there's probably a bit of both in that. Uh, it was carrying a hip injury uh, that was getting worse over time. Training away, went to the trial games, played really really well. Just things weren't working out. I had to move house to Eden Dark. I was going to be travelling from Eden Dark to Throne Train and Eden Dark to Arbo Train. Uh, and I feel as if that you know I was at Throne for six years, left, went back. I feel as if there's probably a wee bit in the middle where I played my best football with Arbo. Mm-hmm. And I feel as if now that, you know, there's a good group of miners coming, there's a good group of players currently there. A management setup that's, you know, probably capable of managing a county team. So I felt the time was right now just to, you know, give Arbo a big, big push and try and get a real cup. So, Kyle, this segment is called Mastermind. Basically, just like the TV show, you have one minute on the clock on your chosen subject, do you want to remind us what you chose as your... Manchester United. Manchester United. Like, proud as anything to you. Proud as anything at the minute. Can't, can't, you can't argue at the minute. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Who scored Man United's only goal in their 1-1 draw versus Chelsea in the 2008 Champions League final? Ronaldo. What year was Manchester United founded? No idea. The players who progressed to the Manchester United first team under Matt Busby were known as what? No idea. Alex Ferguson kicked which object of David Beckham injuring his eye? The hairdryer. Carlos Tevez wore which number during a spell in United? Seven. Roy Keane and which other United pair were suspended for the 1999 Champions League final? Gary Neville. Which Brazilian twin brothers played for Manchester United? Rafael and Fabio da Silva. Who is Man United's all-time leading goal scorer? Wayne Rooney. Who is the club's record signing? Harry Maguire. What is the nickname of Old Trafford? Theatre of Dreams. The club's mascot is called what? The Red Devil. Who turned down the number seven shirt before it was offered to David Beckham in 97? Pass. Who is the only player to win the European Golden Boot while playing for Manchester United? Time here, please. We'll give you time for this question. Who is the only player to win the European Golden Boot while playing for Manchester United? Pass. I'm going to talk about something you know that was quite massive in your career, um, the AFL. Mm-hmm. 
So just a bit of a background for other viewers, you are a huge name in minor football, winning in All-Ireland in 2008, if mm -hmm. I'm correct. Yeah, that's correct. You were then approached by AFL clubs in Brisbane, Carlton and Sydney. Mm -hmm. uh, what sort of thinking, if you don't mind, goes into the decision um, for someone at such a young age, 18, 19, to take your whole life, you know, the other side of the world? It's, my, it's, it's a crazy decision. There's no point in describing it any other way. It's, so approached by uh, Sydney, uh, approached by Carlton and Brisbane, met with all three. Uh, probably a bit more of a... Uh, what don't sure the word I'm looking for is like a probably a bit more approachable was Sydney as they came directly to me to the house where I had to go and meet Brisbane Lions in a hotel and same for Carlton so maybe made this way that decision a bit easier or that made them you know feel a bit more homely towards me that they came directly to the house but look that decision for someone my age had never really been away from home you know I hadn't been like on lads holidays and I was 17 like so it's just a complete decision that was made, you know, with the family. But it was a decision that you know that you have to think this, this is your whole life. You're not going to England. You're not going to Scotland. You're going to the other side of the world where it takes twenty four hours at that you know to get there. So it's a tough decision. Did you realize the the magnitude of it at that time? Probably not. No, probably probably not till more you know later in your career that you realize you get to your twenties, know, early twenties, middle middle of the road there. Like you think. That was a decision that was could have been life changing, really. You know, if you had to stuck it out in terms of financial reasons, you know, stuff like that. But you don't realise the, the magnitude of them decisions at all. And if, if you don't mind me asking, we've had a, um, a few individuals on before that have talked about how they were in constant contact with various individuals, and these individuals had saw them play and various games recorded. Mm -hmm. how, how did the process start? You know, because I think it wasn't just. I'm sitting at my dinner on Friday on the doorknobs. No. no. I had a... Tyrone played Kerry in the 2007 All-Ireland minor quarterfinal. So Tyrone had beat Derry in the minor final. But in the minor tournament, the only buy you get is when you get to the final. Yeah. So you, one team plays the loser and the other team plays the, the winner of the provincial, whatever you're matched up against. So we played Kerry. Derry were through against... I'm not sure who. End up Derry got to the final and were beat by a goal, I think, that day by Zach Toohey, maybe. It was a real... So anyway, I got a letter from Sydney Swans and the fellow introduced himself called Rick Barham and Stuart Maxfield saying we had watched you over the last 18 months and we have seen that you have attributes that would provide well in our game and so on and that's how that came about in terms of the other two. It was through uh, Nicholas Walsh who played for Kiavan who made that introduction with Brisbane so he's kind of acting as a, as a go between intermediate yeah and then there was Carton who just made direct contact with me as well just by a phone call and met them as well but that's that's how the Sydney uh, approach came was via letter to the house and addressed to myself and at this stage do you feel like uh, like you're a Premier League player and there's a few folks <laughs> fighting over you uh, in, in all honesty you probably think that you're you're on top of the world at 17 I can't even I can't even remember how I was feeling, you know. Uh, I was just complete. There probably have been like a, a bit of hype around me at that stage. Probably in terms of height, height and strength, I was scoring heavily, you know, at minor level and had probably had that attributes that that they needed in their game, you know, to to play it. So you probably you know you probably had a bit of a head about yourself in all fairness that you thought you were probably maybe better than you were, but you were getting scouted by clubs that, that were going to pay you to play their game so it was along the lines of a soccer player do you know what I mean so take us on to the next stage um, you made your decision then to go to Brisbane if I'm right Sydney Swans Sydney, Sydney Swans and then um, you know you made the decision you're going family are fully supportive mm -hmm. you hop on the plane you say all your farewells what's the next stage you land in Sydney and is it just find your feet mm -hmm. or no, very well looked after. Very, right? very well looked after, like in fairness. Uh, so, made the decision. Met with Mickey Hart before I left. Uh, made the decision. Uh, landed. Ty Kennelly was a big star, had won the AFL Premiership. Brendan Murphy from Carlo was on their books as well. So, obviously, the two Irish lads landed, lifted the, the other party at the airport. And 
went, met the club, straight into the club and met everyone and shook hands with everyone and that was the formalities into the manager's office along with the two fellas that I'd met was Rick Barham and Stuart Maxfield and tour of the club. That was a Friday landed and the next session was the next morning just come in with them, 7 o'clock Saturday morning so the way they worked it was they trained six days a week trained Monday to Friday obviously some days twice a day and then the Friday Saturday morning was like half hour cardio you could pick running boxing whatever it may be so and then done that with them and the club looked after you brilliant in fairness you know set you up in a house and all them things you have all you know you have all them things that you need like you have your bills paid for you have tax free money certain amount of us tax free and stuff like that so you look after you first class that couldn't say a bad word about Sydney Swans um, and you talked about how you had the, the six days of training how did a, a young lad from Argo that was going to school or going to work and then coming in having his dinner going to Trinidad 7 o'clock down at Argo pitch how do you react to that change does it take away or is it just you're that young you're that eager to go it's just a straight spot well, it was just a straight it was just literally from literally it was one life to another you know uh, I was going to school I missed a year of school then so it was going, going to school literally went over there <laughs> lads lifted to the airport straight in and it was just all guns blazing, straight in, training. You, you're probably that young and green to ever, and this you just go with it. There's not, you know, you're new to it. You, you're going into players like, I'm not sure if you mind Barry Hall playing. You know, I remember playing in the uh, international. Real yeah, series. I mind like I, I mind going back to his house after an eight out. You know, and this is a scary, scary an, looking man, an AFL <laughs> superstar who was turn yeah. was turning pro boxer, which was a complete hard nut. I remember going back to his house after an eight out along with Canelli and all, just end up. It was close, stayed there, and I was like, this is complete madness. This man's an AFL superstar name. Made me take off my shoes at the door after a night out. <laughs> um, and so, paint the picture for us. Um, you stayed in Australia then for... Roughly, went over early October, first week in October. Stayed till about the 17th of December. And don't just regular coming home. The only, reason, the only reason for that is, it's part of the, well, it was part of Cindy Swan's contract at the time that I had till that didn't have to but they give you a return flight home at Christmas yeah. obviously you know part of your package being the so far away that's the deal that they offer you and so went home at Christmas mm-hmm. and then I was the captain of Arbo Miners that year who had just won recently won the club championship grade one championship going to play local rivals Ballandary in the St Paul's tournament the Ulster tournament made a decision end up staying at home you know and that's that's how the whole thing. Remind me, me uh, Sam, how close to the to the plane flight was the decision made? Were you uh, staring looking at the ticket? No, I probably made a decision in in the course of that time when I landed home. Christmas probably a time too where it's not nice to be at, not it's brilliant to be at home, but I do think if I had been at ho- if I had been in Australia at a different time, it would have played out differently. I just think that because it was such a short window, it nearly felt like a holiday. So it was like six weeks or whatever it was, maybe close to nine, sorry. Out there, oh, you're home now. And I felt a bit, you know, caught between two stools as such. Am I staying here? Going to be, if I don't if I don't go back, I'm going to be in the throne team here, going to be in the throne setup. So this decision was probably made hastily over that time. And it was probably a bit, they, they did land home. The, the two fellas landed till the house again and said, look, this opportunity's wide open here. For uh, leave this door open for a number of weeks, you know you don't have to make a, a decision. It's tough for a young lad, and it was nice of them to you know to come all that way again twice. Where, where I lived was the Trone bus, literally pulled up outside. No joke, I lived on the main road. The Trone bus that was their pickup point. Always from as young, I was saying like, I, I want to play for Trone. I want to play for Trone. Always, always, always had a ball in my hand. There was a skip outside our house for rubbish, just for the local. It's just where it was, and. That's all I was doing, I was kicking the ball against the skip night, day and night. And look, probably it was a decision that was made, yes, a bit hastily, but you probably made it for the right reasons. You know, you want to play for your club, for Tyrone. So look, it, it was a decision that was made. You, you don't know whether it's the right or wrong decision. It was just a decision that was made. On that note, looking back today, any regrets? I wouldn't say regrets. I would love to have a crystal ball to see how... You, Oh, it would have fared out how it would have fared out in terms of you know Cutter had a career you know I do keep a close eye on it still uh, um, I follow it and I would watch it regularly on Saturday mornings and stuff like that so I would love to have seen how it went on because the feedback I was getting on a weekly basis from the club that you had meetings with them was 
you're really, really getting on really, really well here. Straight into first team training, like it wasn't as if you were going to a reserve panel. Straight into first team training, you were training, and the the feedback I was getting from them was, you know, yours far down the line as Ty Kennelly was at this stage in his career, you know, so you were getting on well, you know, so it, it could have worked out, you know, I would have presumed a year later I would have been making the debut for the senior team, for the first team, so I would like to, I would like to see how it would have went now in fairness. That, their training was, you know, so they'd have taken me, take me out of some drills and say, right, look, we're going to focus 30 minutes here on just kicking, video camera from behind, video camera from the front, how to drop the ball, but one thing I did find, and I'm not sure if any of the lads had said to you previously, but they were completely amazed by dummies. And I was quite skillful when I was younger, completely amazed. Like we were doing hand passing drills one time and, and I had the oval ball in the hand and went to like fist it that way, but didn't fist it. Yeah. And they were jumping, you know, and that's what I found that they were quite robotic. Now it's changed, it has changed, it's, but... It seems, it seems to be that same sort of thing, you know, we've yeah. also the clips of Conor McKenna playing the solo dummy. The solo dummy, yeah. I think it's... That's that, that, that's well. what I mean. Like uh, I remember just doing a simple hand pass, like where you would fake a fist pass and go the other way. We were doing a drill where it was all hand passing, but the players in the middle could cut it out. So I just was just down the line drill, fake, come back the other way, and they were like, you know, it was like someone had been nutmegged in soccer. It was like looking to see, you know, is anybody get that in camera sort of thing? But in turn, you can see their game is they're quite lateral, or you know, if they're running, they're running hard, direct long kicks and off the shoulder so you can see the you know the clips Conor McKenna you know even the, the clip of Marty Clark chipping it up you know which would be still would be highlighted in our game but not till the, the magnitude the, the level that they'd be highlighted like a, a Kyle Coney or a similar player in the same situation that you were in at eighteen nineteen. Yeah. have you any advice for anyone in, in that boots yeah oh go and see it go and you have to and I did advise Cal McShane to do the same. Yeah, he did speak to me about, you know, I'm sure he, he sought advice from loads of people and asked him, what, what do you think? And I said, there's nobody, you're always going to say, what if I think, that's my motto, you know, I would advise any lad, if any lad gets that opportunity in their early teens, you know, 17, 18, go and see it for your own eyes because it could set up a life for yourself. You know, you could love it, you could hate it, but at least you say I've done it and I done it and, I'm glad Cahill done it too to, to make his own mind up for himself, you know. Um, but definitely I would be advising any young lad to go and see it. And that would be in any sport. You know, we've lost a young lad in our own club till soccer, Michael Michael Forbes. He's captain of West Ham under 18s. I would be telling him the same. Go and see it. And if it's not your club and your county, it'll always be there, like, you know. Okay, Kay, our next round is called the What Were You Thinking Round? First of all, I'm going to cast your mind back to the National League. Jerome were playing a game against Cork, and he kicked nine points. What yeah. goes through, through a man's head when he kicks nine points against Cork? Just get me the ball as much as possible. Just, <laughs> just literally, every night I touched that day, just went to gold. Like, and that's even all the points I scored that day, I mean, picking out a pass, and it still sticks in my head to this day that. People wouldn't even see that, but that sticks in my head of how well I played because I, I I would have vision and that would be a part of my game. But it's just every night I touched that day it went over the bar, no matter where I shot from, left foot, right foot, just it went seemed to go over sail over the bar very very nicely too. How often do those days come? Not too often. There's plenty of days that go the wrong side of the post, you know. The following week against Dublin, obviously a marked man off at half time with a medial ligament injury, so. Shows how quickly it can, it can turn mm -hmm. from such a high to such a high to such a low. Uh, I was having, you know, obviously we were scoring nine points the week before. Dublin had their eye on, you know, someone to mark in with Mangrove. Rory Carr was on my, was physical from the start, so it was. 30 minutes later, it was ice pack in the knee and out for eight to ten weeks. What was going through your head when you were approached, first of all, from Sydney Swans? Probably fear. It would be a word that I would use, but just for the sake of being away from home, you know, not knowing, not knowing how to cope with that. Yes, you, you, the club tell you of all these things, and you'll be looked after, but you don't know how you'll do without the parents. And someone at seventeen who hadn't been away from home was probably a bit fearful, excited too, obviously, but probably a, a deep down, you know, that anxious, nervous fear where you think, just the unknown, who's going to cook for me. <laughs> Something similar to that. What ha What were you thinking when you first took your foot off the plane into the 
Sydney Sun and a pair of tracks at bottom, a pair of baggy tracks at bottom. Is what you thinking? Where's the shorts now? I was just excited to see. Uh, it was early morning when I landed there, so uh, it was just ex- pure excitement to see. Obviously, Australia. Whenever I was in around two thousand eight, it was probably you had a lot of Irish departing, you know, for all over Australia. So there was a lot of people that I had knew out there. So I was excited, you know, to see the people that I hadn't seen in a while as well. And actually shared a home for a while with Paddy Radley International Rules was on out there. So Paddy stayed with us for a wee while out there. So okay, it was pure excitement and just to see a, a country that I'd never even thought of before. And uh, just to contrast it, how did you feel when you made your debut for Tyrone? So it was a McKenna Cup game against St Mary's and you still remember it clearly then? Five points, man a match. Mind it just like it was yesterday. Um that's on YouTube of that game too. So just mind that day and uh, had a really good game. Obviously, you know, you played against a college team, uh, just the, the way that the McKenna Cup was at that time, the, the universities. You, I would have been at university at the time, so you'd have been playing against fellow players, you know, from from a different university. So, but it was pure excitement as well and it's just good to get the ball rolling, you know, probably had it been for my left minors till I went to the seniors and then that bit of a gap in between where I was just excited again to get back in that throne jersey. It's probably fair to say that I'm going to make a comment and say things could have maybe ended a bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. But, you know, how did you feel when you read the comment that Mickey Hart had said, um, I think said something along those horses for courses mm-hmm. or That's right. something to do with your pace? Yeah. You know, and I know you've commented on this before, yeah. but how do you feel or what, what were you thinking? What was through your head in, in that process, Blaze? Um, I, I actually got alerted to the comment. I didn't see it myself directly and it was sent to me obviously you know phones and everything nowadays and whatsapp doesn't be long and getting out so i get this message saying you know don't think this was appropriate or yeah and i'd be you know a bit easy enough going so wouldn't really but when i sat and thought about it i was like you know yes i, I do know times that media can take things out of context and words can be misplaced and certain things but i i, I know how it came across so it did, it hurt, you know, it hurt after getting back into the throne setup, mm-hmm. playing so well. First game back against Derry that year, man of the match again. Mm-hmm. I was like, what do you need to do here? What, what, you know, yes, I'm playing well, scoring, setting up, creating, but now my pace is being talked about. You know, it was disappointed, like, you know, and I do think a manager, my opinion, if I was a manager, I, I would like to approach you directly and say, look, this is something I think we need to work on. Can we do it? Throne have all the resources. Peter Donnelly was there. We had all the time in the world to maybe work on that, you know. But that's it, I was disappointed in that comment. In fairness, now. I would say it was no lightning quick. But if I was out in front of someone, there was I was getting the ball. Like you know, I don't think it was a a problem that I had. I think probably n- nowadays everyone highlights Jack McCaffrey, uh, Gavin White, mm-hmm. Paul Mannion for lightning speed because you know they're taking men on in, in open spaces in Crook Park it did happen to me against Derry where Brendan Rogers was coming down the lane and sidestepped me and went past me and I minded yeah. but I would always been trying to be smart enough to not get myself in a situation where I was going to be really outpaced all the time do you know what I mean you're physical you can try and get in the way get in the way I, 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 I was a bit you know it was a bit out of the blue in fairness you know, because I probably, I was thinking I was on till I, like, I, I was playing well here. I, I'm doing all the right things. I'm in a good place. I'm fit. I'm healthy. You know, I have a chance of starting here. And then all of a sudden, you, it's horses for courses. So that means there'll be games that don't suit you. Did that set you way back? It, it probably didn't set me way back because I went and approached Mickey straight away. Like, we were training and, you know, I said to the wife, I was just, you know, I've said to this man here, like, why not say to me about that? You know, why not say, look, okay, I would appreciate him coming to me and say, look, there's games that might not suit you. That Me and him then can have that conversation and say, look, well, I think this, you think that, and then we can come to some kind of agreement or we can talk it out. But to hear it through the media, I had to go to him and say, look, why not say to me? And it probably did set me back a wee bit in terms of confidence because I thought it was in a good place. You know, I was back playing well. Um, but I thought it was well. Maybe Mickey's opinion of that was different, but it probably did set me back in terms of, you know, what more do I need to do here? And at my age, yes, it's going to be hard to 
you know, get faster as such. You know, you can work on them things surely, but it probably set me back slightly, all right, I Probably that's the relationship that Mickey had with certain players and, you know, I, I wasn't the best at everything, surely not, and there's loads of things that I'm not great at on the pitch that can do so much better. And personally, in my opinion, that's Mickey was downfall to me was communication. So, you know, that was a, a conversation to be had at training. Look, this is what you need to do. This is what you can do. You can do so many good things, but we need you to work on this for a wee while or we need you to watch the way your feet's going or that conversation we never had. It came to me in a, in a media comment where there's horses for courses and he's not, actually I think it was, there's not, he's not the fastest player in two legs. And you know, it's, it's a bit, I think, disrespectful in my opinion. Probably if, if I'm to comment from an outsider looking, you don't see too many comments, you know, made by, you know, a drone mm-hmm. player or management, you know, about anything that happens within the circle. Was there, dare I say, double standards? Was there different groups? Uh, probably uh, there was certain things I got you know uh, that's the way I looked at it being in the inside you know there were certain players that even from when I left school in 2015 and I know there was other players that, that felt the same with that you know and it's no coincidence I don't think that there's a lot of players that um, were forward players that left the throne panel yeah. you yeah. know to name a few there was Darren myself Mark Bradley Lee Brennan Conor McAlliskey mm-hmm. can't all be wrong yeah. we're thrown obviously we're evolving and adapting until the game at that time where we were playing probably wing half forwards who were natural defenders you know so that take that take was taken away from the forwards you know if you're naming six forwards you maybe were only naming three yeah. natural forwards you might have been naming two wing half forwards that it might have been more naturally wing half backs you might have been naming you know an inside forward coming out you know so it's disappointing and I mind a certain game in particular and I spoke about it before was against Ross Common scored two points set up a goal I was taken off at half time and I was like you know but the whole reason was I wasn't holding my position in the corner that's what I was told at training the following Thursday night why I was dropped but we were going to play Dublin the following week it was the last round of the qualifiers going to play Dublin the All-Ireland quarter final Muggsy had been dropped and the mulligan factor was probably coming into effect against Dublin you know Muggsy turns up on the big day so it was a reason to get him back in again look Oh, Mulligan was a superstar, like, but why drop him in the first place? You know, that, and I was taken off. I was sacrificed that day at half time against Rush Common, who threw the kitchen sink at us in the first half, and they might only been appointed either way. But Throne was always going to pull away in the second half, which did happen. Yeah. We went out against Dublin the following week, two weeks later, and we we're turning over. How would you say you cope with maybe setbacks or something that maybe really affected you? You'll see it on Twitter. Would you be someone that would shy away from maybe social media or would you use it maybe as fuel for the next day you know, and you to prove these people wrong? Mm, and probably, uh, I probably wouldn't be like shy away from it too much, you know. I've been critiqued a lot throughout my career, different, loads of different reasons. So I wouldn't really shy away from it because I do believe that when you see it, you know, you know, cert- certain people say, you know, haven't turned up this day or, you know, you haven't played well that day. Look, it is what it is. You're never going to be 100%. It's like anything. You just have to go out, give it your 100%. I know that, you know, I give it 100%. Yeah. It wasn't for the, the purpose of not trying or not wanting. So, no, I would never shy away from it. Or I would never, I, I actually like seeing it, you know. I, yeah. I would like to see, I like to see certain things, you know, that be said or wrote about you or whatever. Like, you know, doesn't doesn't really bother me too much. Like, but. And similar to that, you've had also a lot of great days. And mm-hmm. Would you maybe not want to get too carried away or do you like sort of seeing it in the end being the next day you know it's just like you know, I'm on top of the world I like to see you know, you, I don't think there's any player that doesn't like to see it as well you yeah. know yes you keep it to yourself it wouldn't be you know sharing things are you know publicly but it's nice to see you know like obviously you can see stuff all kind of games were always relayed back to the players and certain things they got and it's nice to see and nice to see obviously things that that be wrote about you if you do have a good game it's nice to see you know, what you've done well you know influenced the game or created a lot of scores or kicked a lot of scores or you know turned over the ball a few times it's nice to see all them things and I think all players are, are the same feed off positive energy you know and I do believe that's anybody saying that's probably a liar that's not <laughs> watching stuff like that you know and Callum McShane was always a big fan of watching stuff <laughs> but I, I'm one of them people the way I think uh, it's See if I missed one training session, I would feel unfit. Yeah, that's that's my mindset. 
and you're not like I know a good friend of mine Michael Cassidy Michael could go six weeks without training and feel he's the fittest player in Tyrone that's just his mindset you know that's where I feel as if I need to be training every day some days twice a day yeah. just for the sole reason of that's my mindset and so I, I don't switch off that easy in terms of you know I watch all types of sports. You always be taking bits and pieces from them all, you know, to see what you do better. Even I probably got worse this last while, thinking, you know, how do we get better? How do we get better? What can I improve on for the club season? What makes you better? Just you know. And do you Honestly. think if say you had that a good run at it, you know, maybe not being subbed and things like that, and also a few injuries and all that there, which are just part of the game. But do you think you know we would be talking today to? You know, Kelly Coney, you know, who's won loads of all stars and possibly maybe led her own to and all Look, that. Look, it's a, it's a very it's a difficult question. You know, I always put it down till you know, it's a, sorry to say you should could have been this and could have been that. It, it didn't work. It didn't work out like that. In my head, you know, that's how I wanted it to work out. It's yeah. it's difficult in terms of saying, you know, you could have done this, you could have done that. At the end of the day, it didn't happen that way. It didn't. I didn't do that. In my head, I wanted it to work out together. I wanted to be a better Tyrone player. Look, there was, there was lots of things. It was my fault down through the years too. Like probably not working hard enough in certain games, and you know, probably throwing the head up because you know being subbed and well, not work as hard next week at training and young and naive and yes. you know I would give different advice to some of my age now. But that's I, I do believe I could have had a different Tyrone career if things had worked out, injuries, all them things. But unfortunately, it just it didn't pan out that way. You say you train basically every day now. Mm -hmm. What was the case with eighteen year old Kay once he came back from Australia? Um, was he training? Probably not as much as he should have been at that stage. While you're talking two thousand eight, is it? It's yeah. probably you know two thousand eight, two thousand nine. You're not thinking natural ability at that age. Probably yeah. carried me through, mm -hmm. and I mind going out to play against. Mayo in the National League and coming up against physical men, you know, who probably bullied me a wee bit mm -hmm. to a certain degree. And you're thinking, you know, you need to work harder. Need to be, it's just, at that age, you probably think it's just a matter of time before it's coming. Yeah. You know, you look at David Clifford now, he's made a transition really, really easily. <laughs> you can make it look easy, like, but it's not as easy as he makes it look, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. There's, I wish I had worked harder when I was younger. I wish I had put more effort into my own game and, and working harder. Systems and all them things can go, come into too, but I wish definitely wish I had worked harder in that 18 to about 24 age, you know. The type of game has changed, you know. I obviously came very defensive there, you know, with the start of the, the tens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've seen less and less of the natural score. I think that maybe... Okay, 100%. There is, whenever Tyrone were, I, I, in the early days of Tyrone, I was coming in with teams with Stephen O'Neill, Owen Mulligan, Sean Kavanagh, Brian Duher. So it was going to be hard to get in. Yeah. And I mean, one th thing that stuck out to me was whenever we got to the Ulster final in 2010, I think we were going for, it may have been the second, that may have been two in a row. And we were beating Monaghan well, and Mickey brought on Colin McCullough and Brian McGuigan. You know, I thought there's an opportunity for, you know, us young lads to get out and get 10 minutes of just the game was over Tron had it won so I think it was just an opportunity for us to that would have been a wee stepping stone saying this is what kind of atmosphere physicality, physicality but this is the level this is the speed this game's played at because championship and league is different you know so it would have been nice to be involved in times where football was a bit simpler and mm -hmm. forwards were forwards and yeah so it would have been like but system, systems it was the same for everyone yeah, you know, just not me. It was the same for everyone. But Mickey went with the style that he thought suited us, and you know, took her own to a certain level. You know, the running game was was good, but look at at the end of the day, it didn't beat a Donegal or didn't sorry, didn't beat a Dublin or a Kerry or Mayo in the games that mattered. Next yeah. topic. I just want to talk to Kelly Coney, you know, rather than talking to Kelly Coney, the Tyrone footballer, I want to talk to Kelly Coney, the Tyrone fan mm -hmm. moving forward. In, in your opinion, Kyle, over the probably last, I'm going to say, 10 years or so, mm -hmm. should Tyrone have won in Ireland? 100%. Um, why did they not? Um, as, as, a, as simply a fan, well, fan from, yeah. looking from the outside. No, you can give me both yeah, aspects. Yeah, no, you, you've been there you, well, and you've been as, in the circle. As a fan, you think mm -hmm. Dublin have been there. 
yeah. you know, sit back. You know, you boys watching it like Dublin are phenomenal. Like they make so little mistakes uh, and they're so good going forward. They punish you at every opportunity. So, like I watch games now, you know, and you'd be looking at small aspects and how they're so good and the bench so strong. Just they're so good to watch and they make so little mistakes. To me, systematically, thrown failed. You know, we didn't set up right. Sometimes we probably a bit worried about. That's me watching now. Would have been saying Tyrone were too conservative. Just worry too much about what a team can do to them yeah. rather than we can do to them. Yeah, that's that, that's what I would say. You know, being a Tyrone footballer and playing in Tyrone, knowing the forwards that Tyrone had, I do think they could have hurt teams more. I think if it was played back and decisions were made in, in another sort of way or strategy or tactic you're talking about, you think we'd be looking at a Tyrone team at the minute that have, you know, dare I say dominated as much as Dublin mm-hmm. over this past five, six uh, years? I'm not sure about that because that dominance is going to be something maybe never be repeated. Yeah. I do think Tyrone have slipped in, like, I mean, watching the All-Ireland final in 17, Tyrone, 18, I'm not sure the exact year. Went so far ahead of the... 5-0 up and I was sitting, I mean, watching it in a, in a local bar in, in Kalil and I was saying to myself, this is mad like you know I'm probably thinking wish I was there I hadn't been to the game from it and I didn't want to go to the final but I mean watching it was like uh, probably a few decisions shot wise players you know pulled the trigger a few times you know had a man his game even better it might have worked out different for them I do think Throne missed definitely one if not two All-Irelands in that last 10 years definitely what's the solution to stop that one Score 122, 123. Simple as that, like, uh, in all fairness, that's what it's going to take. It's Andy Moore made saying it a, a few years back. He says you need to score at least 21, 22 points. And I, and I always thought it was that's mad scoring, but it's right what he's saying. And you probably need a goal. Realistically, you need a goal. Like, I know we, we beat them last year in the league. God, that, well, the weather was mm-hmm. absolutely atrocious, you know. And you're not going to get that weather later in the year. You're not going to get the conditions in Oma. You know, you're going to have to score, be on fire up front, mm-hmm. be as solid as you can be at the back. They're, they're going to get scores. They're going to create one or two goal chances that they're, they could take. So you're going to need to take one at the other end and make sure somebody's like, you know, Kerry went at them mm-hmm. in the final, the replay. Go for it. You know, let them beat you. Try and outscore them because they will give you opportunities. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure, you know, watching that yourself, you see the loads of opportunities. You've seen weaker teams score goals against them. So you're thinking, why can, you know, why can Tyrone or why can Kerry not put in one or two goals? But you're going to need a tag on 20, 19, 20 points. Like. And, and with uh, Logan and Duhur in charge now, are we going to see a change in the Tyrone? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Will, will we see the 122, 123? I believe so. Uh, it has to be. You know, what? what's the point of going out and doing the same thing? You know, doing the same thing and getting the same results that's I believe so and being around them for a wee short period of time that's you know they have exciting Conor McKenna's back Cal McShane's going to be fit Dark Yanovan's sharp Dar McCurry's sharp Mark Bradley's sharp Lee Brennan's sharp Conor McAllister's there there's nobody there you know that it's going to be hard to fit all them boys in they would have named Peter Hart where does Kyle Coney fit in that six? Probably number nineteen. <laughs> no, uh, um, them boys are like they're all razor sharp, and it's it's going to be a hard, tricky job for them, man, to keep the, all them boys that's, happy. That's the position, probably, that as a Tron fan looking, and you want to see. Yeah, you talked earlier on about how you, you know, in a six forward line, you can only have three forwards. If you're talking, you've talked about nine, probably Tron forwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do those nine fit into three? You know, it's well, far I, I, for, I, for six. I hope that nine fits into six. Yeah, with them boys, and I do believe Peter Hart is back to defence mm-hmm. where his game I think personally he's better at coming at you mm-hmm. sometimes players find the game harder with their back to the goals and maybe take a bit of uh, what was it, like take a bit of pressure off him where he's been directly man marked if he's played in the forward line you know if he, he's in the half back line you, know, you don't be as tend to be you know you're coming at the game the whole time you're coming with with your face face the goal I think it'll bring him on to the next level yeah. you know? so in your honest opinion mm-hmm. Will we see a Tyrone man standing on the Hogan stand 
Next year. Next year or the year after? Next year might be a wee bit early. I don't know. I would love to say it. I would love to say yes. Pressure on the new management. Pressure on the new management. Bedding in time. Duher has played at that level. Logan has played at that level, but it's totally different now. You know, I know Desi Farrell slipped right in, but he slipped right into a team that, mm-hmm. to a certain degree, could serious, manage them. Serious foundations there, yeah. Probably manage themselves to a certain degree. I do think Tyrone are the best equipped team to challenge Dublin. I know Kerry have got the forwards, but I think they're a bit suspect at the back. I think Tyrone have the defenders as well. You know, Potty Hampshire hasn't been fit this couple of years, who is an all star. Mm-hmm. Rona McNamee is an all star. Peter Hart's back in the defence. You know, they fill in around them. Like, they have a serious Nell Morgan. I, I, I think he's in the top two keepers in Ireland. Mm-hmm. You know, so the serious foundation, probably in the midfield is an area of Thrones going to lack a wee bit. I don't know, you know, with Callum retiring, you know, Brian Candy and Colin Kilpatrick's probably the, the two natural midfielders there. It takes a bit of time to get to use that role. Like, how do you mark, young man. How do you mark Brent Hunton? Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's, <laughs> it's not an easy task. Uh, he's like a, a gazelle horse. He just yeah. never stops. Like, and look, I said that Brian Kenny done well on him in the National League in Dublin, Crook Park, the year before last, stopped him. You probably need to match him physically. Mm-hmm. I think maybe a year early for Tyrone. I would hope I'm wrong. I hope that time is two in a row. But And, and this time, well, Kev Coney be sitting in the stand watching or will be sitting in a bar in Cleveland? Sitting in a bar. Happy enough? Nah, I have enough. I, I hate that old talk of going to matches thinking, oh, you should be there. You know. Yes. Nah, I don't like that. Maybe be doing a bit of co-commentary somewhere, but I don't think I'll be I'll be at them. I, I, just, I, like, I don't like that aspect of I'll grind talk where you could do better or you could do this because every lad's doing their best. So first of all, I'm going to start off by asking your toughest opponent, okay? Now, I want you to think about specifically a team and a player that you've right. come up against. Mm-hmm. Uh, player, Keith Higgins. Mm-hmm. Tenacious, like, there's no, there's, yeah. no, there's no, getting, no getting away from him, you know, it's just, he's like a sticky plaster. You know, you think you have him gone, no, nah, still there. He's just there, there, there the whole time. He, it's just one of them players that... You go home and you have a nightmare. You never get any change out of him, you know? <laughs> Even like even watching him back then, yeah. you know, it's just a top class defender. I always admired him a, a lot. Team wise, Donegal's a hard team, mm-hmm. you know. Probably physically over the years they've been strong and the uh, one of them teams where they're really hard to play against because you're not sure what you get. They're always leaving something on you, going past you, ball's gone, you're, you're getting knocked, you're getting banged, you, you know, you're doing them things too, but you. They're a serious hard team to play against because because they are so physical. You know they're they're always they're always in your face. And probably, do you associate that with going to play in Donegal, or would there somewhere that you would stick out and say is the worst place that I would like to play in, or place that I hate going to? Uh, no, it's Donegal, Bally Buffet is not a nice place to go to. You know, it's a ground that's you know it's quite a track away from Tyrone in in terms of you know where I'm from, so. Uh, you get the Dublin, every bit is quick, you know. Um, their change room's quite poor. It was always a hard... I mean, going down there in 2012 in a completely jam-packed game mm-hmm. that people was climbing over the railings to get in. 2012-2013, and they let the grass glow, grow. We had a small change room, no hot water. Mm-hmm. You know, you were into a complete That's war. stuff you would have done in a... Division two, your own challenge. Yeah, exactly. You were going down to a complete minefield. You know, you didn't know what you were getting. And I would always say Donegal was a tough, tough team to play against. Uh, anywhere in Tyrone, you don't like to play in. Um, not really. No, I suppose uh, Drumore is always a hard place to go to. You know, it's just always. Well, this is you say, it's just hard to come out. Hard to come out. Result. Yeah. Simple as that. They make life really, really difficult for you. Home and away, uh, definitely. But they're, they're always at the top end of their own league football they haven't probably just produced it in the championship this last couple of years but their league form has been you know they're in league finals league semi-finals every year top four and we have they're really really hard opposition favourite place to play home home, home. Arbo. Arbo no place like home no I really really enjoy playing at home like I do it's it's a 
it's a it's a tight ground suits us. Obviously, you know, we have a scoring end and like most clubs, the legs shoot. Uh, is there one way? Uh, this is a sort of thing that you know when you have conversations with Gaelic footballers, there was a way that they rather play. Uh-huh. Have a scoring side. No, we probably do. You probably shoot them down to the clubhouse uh, or pitch. Yeah, uh, no, our balls the same, yeah. exact same. But if I was taking a toss around like that, I shoot up the pitch. Even if there's a breeze, mm-hmm. favouring you. Something about it. We have we have two pitches, so they're directly one directly behind the other with yeah. the catch net in between it. So it's a second set of posts behind it. As well, oh, yeah, yeah. the post painted black at the back, so it's just. But it's still a hard, like forty-five meters out seems like sixty, but the opposite end. Very open, sort of. Saying, uh, yeah. But the, the the opposite end, like I've seen me hitting points from well outside the forty-five and stuff, going over the catch net. Yeah. Just uh, probably a mental thing too, but uh, definitely I love playing in our role, like especially in sunny days. Um, I know not reverse this question, but favorite manager you've played under? Um, I like. Really like Raymond Monroe. Was a really, really good manager for me. Was really honest and open with me at minor level. Took me in on 21s as well. Made me captain. Uh, I really enjoyed him. Uh, and I really enjoyed my time under Mickey Donnelly. Uh, uh, previous term with Arbo. Because the championship final. So, looking you know, forward to that. I'm trying to throw this nice line in because Mickey Donnelly's back. No, no. He got, me, he got, us, back. got us to the championship final. <laughs> Um, right, that you well uh, uh, were Dramore beat us too. We're up in the what is it last minute penalty, the penalty the one that one that still penalty. hurts. We're four or five That's up and they got a penalty later on to, to win it by a point. So no, I didn't enjoy the time with Mickey the last time. I'd never worked with him before I was young and so I'm excited to get back working with him again, you know. How does uh you said, you know, that the honesty in that was very good. How does somebody manage Kate Coney? It probably t- quite tough to manage, in fairness. Uh I do believe communication is a factor, you know, I'm truthful, you know, in terms of honesty, would probably be the, the, the word. Raymond was very straight talking, but was the same with everyone. Told you how it is, mind him giving her their treatment. I'm not sure if any is mind, but we had three games against Down in the under 21s. Three championship games all went to draws. So one was Arma, one was Yuri, one was Oma. Just complete mayhem. But he was telling us how it was, and we were all involved with the senior team. And he was telling us, "You boys is too big for your shoes, and yeah. you know, don't be worrying about that. That's you know, this is where yeah, you need yeah, to be. Yeah. This is where, this is just your team." And there was maybe six or seven of us all involved in the drone senior team. Uh, there was myself, Peter Hart, Matty Donnelly, Niall McKenna, Paddy McNeese, Kieran Gerb, all part of the senior setup, playing senior games on a weekly basis. But I really enjoyed him. You know, I liked his honesty. He got the best out of me. So that's probably why I enjoyed my time under under Raymond. Um, we'll just take this in a different way. Who was your idol growing up? Probably idol Brian McGuigan. Uh, I loved watching Peter Cameron. Peter Cameron probably is the greatest player I ever seen, and most people they he's, he's the greatest player ever. And I would be on that way of thinking as well. I was just about to ask you who your GA goat was. You probably answered that. Then. GA goats, Peter Cameron. You know, no doubt about it. Idol probably. Looking up was Brian McGuigan, just same club. A man who I probably modelled the game slightly on mm-hmm. was passing and his movement. And you hear boys like I was, you know, you hear saying he could thread the ball to the Evan Needle and yes. them sort of saying stuff like that. What about you love playing your pass? It's that you know you love playing with him, you know, and even he played in senior championship last year for us mm-hmm. and was probably the man of the match for the first twenty five minutes at forty because he. He can waltz past someone, still has that two yards of pace, you know, to get past someone. But then, obviously, the legs not there now. So I really enjoyed playing with Brent, looking up to him, and he, he was probably in my eyes one of the best 11s ever to play the game. Not that I, you know, just in my time anyway. Like, but seeing the clips and the passing and stuff, it, it was phenomenal. Like he, he was, he scored some cracking scores. Like he, there's not too many men uh, in that time tore Kieran McGinney apart, mm-hmm. you know, and he done it with ease. Like. Uh, any idols you know away from Gaelic football was there any other sports you uh, uh, as I say I watch all sports you know I, I love I love soccer I love darts love basketball I'm not a, sorry not a huge basketball fan. I love uh, American football I suppose like uh, everyone loves reading quotes from someone who's doing well I always love like I'm always I'm a Ronaldo fan like so Ronaldo or Messi I'm, or Ronaldo. I'm, I'm a Ronaldo man probably because he played for my yes. head but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know we have this group or the Whatsapp weekly discussions Ronaldo will do one thing on a Saturday and Messi yeah. will do one thing on a Sunday who's better who's the more stats so 
Messi hasn't scored it's the same way the classical goals <laughs> that Ronaldo has and Ronaldo's not at Juventus anymore but I love like listening to I would listen to podcasts with LeBron James and stuff like that I, lo- I love did you ever see the boy Ray Boyne on Twitter yeah you know, uh, he's not a he's in Dublin, is uh, he was in Dublin. I love seeing all that kind of stuff you yeah. know that, that's the kind of stuff I love seeing and I follow all sports follow you know just uh, say Twitter's a word you're Twitter, a sportsman sportsman and like I love like watching snooker I love watching Judd Trump I just love watching sport all the time you're a Judd Trump fan no it's no, like, no, this is a Judd Trump no fan. just you see you <laughs> see the rock at all, oh man. I love like Ronnie's yeah. the most but you know Judd Trump now is, is tr- probably trying to emulate what he's at you yes. know the Rockets probably the the goat in the snooker world isn't he like yeah um Sorry, go, go into that there another quick fire question what's more important diet or gym diet diet oh your diet man diet uh, 100% okay. do all the diet you want or all the gym you want but if you're eating the wrong food you're you're just blowing the wrong way like aren't you it's, diet's key like and it's massive to performance you know and I've learned about it probably over the last seven, eight, nine years you know carb up four games and when not to take yeah. too many carbs stuff like that and caffeine and all them kinds of things no definitely be a definitely be a dead dead yeah. man uh, favourite achievement and uh, I'm not saying you're anywhere near that stage you're looking back yeah. I'm just uh, saying to date to date um, favourite achievement it's a tough question probably captain the club to the minor championship mm-hmm. I would say would be one in all Ireland, man of the match in all Ireland final, you know, brilliant and all the stuff that goes along with it and you know the but when it go comes down to nitty gritty it's definitely it's nice to be involved in you know them celebrations of it's only a small group of people. Mm-hmm. You know, haven't got to win a championship or whatever yet with Arbo, but I won a minor championship grade one and was the captain and won it with a local Gavin Devlin was the manager along with a uh, local uh, fella uh, and a bell who owns a restaurant and free food you know to I mean go back to his free food and we played Ergil Keir in the first round of the championship and it was the night that Man United played Chelsea and we didn't know the result and he brought us back to Tilly Lamp for the food and put the match on and you know them wee things and a few beer and just, them things uh, I would say the achievement of my, my, our representing our board at, at minor level winning that championship sticks out to me like and then they will finish with this when you're looking back what's the biggest regret um probably just not fulfilling my Tyrone potential you know because at the end of the day yes you know every lad loves their club but it's nice when you get that opportunity and have the opportunity of playing for your county probably then having the expectation that I had on myself the career that I had beforehand with the Tyrone Miners it's disappointing to know that I probably could have done better. There's no probably about it. I could have done better as a senior inter-county player. That would be a you regret. Know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, mm-hmm. but you know, you probably have to look at it from both sides because you did have a very successful career. Yeah. I did die. I did have a successful career, yes, and I represented Toronto on many occasions over 50 times or whatever it may be. But, you know, I, I would have high standards and I always have high standards and everything, but uh, I would have liked to be in a Conor McManus or uh, uh, Michael Murphy or you know I mean being at a, an AFL combine with Michael Murphy you know and me and him were around the same age and he's been on to be you know mm-hmm. Donegal's best ever player and I, I don't know what happens or what things what way careers go like but it'd be nice to be you know along that magnitude of them boys mm-hmm. you know because I, I believe I had the skill set you know and it'd be nice to get to them levels you know right okay this here's called the rumor round so you can just tell us whether these are true or false you can confirm or deny <laughs> first one you couldn't find the lecture hall on your first day of uni and decided this isn't for me and left <laughs> left the course uh there's probably an element of truth probably st- spent another wee while sitting in the in the mall watching people for another wee period of time but jordan sounds a big place boys <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would say half true, half false. Half true. Half so true. How long did probably uh, spent another a few months at Jordan's Day. Few months. Few months at Jordan's Day. Oh, so, so. And then was invaded back again, but <laughs> no, 
Uh, that's so about, it wasn't that you just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the first day at all. Um, a second one that uh, had a bit of a rumor that you had a brief spell with Dungan and Swifts. Yeah, short, but uh, how short? Five six weeks still. And was was it ever a goal or? No, it was never a goal. I just got a phone call and say, "Would you come up and train?" And I just went up and so it just wasn't for me. Just the setup and all. Just I didn't didn't feel part of the whole thing. So now I didn't pursue it anymore. Like love playing soccer. Like I played soccer for numerous teams throughout the years and and won a mil, won a, a street league with a mill wheel massive. Um, so I, I enjoyed playing soccer, but now I didn't. I didn't uh, pursue it too much longer. I was with them not so long ago. Just left. Well, when you played street league with them a while, did you? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I won a won a. Or there was something in common. Street league champion. Won, won a, a league with uh, Marty Red and a few boys <laughs> like that. So I have a street league title. Couldn't be in the photograph right now because I was playing with Jerome at the time. That was your best achievement. <laughs> I couldn't be in the photograph. Had to stand out of the photograph because I was playing for Jerome at the time. <laughs> and you probably expelled my my last rumor, but. You know, because you've talked so so heavily about getting back out to Arbo, you're not moving to Dundalk or nothing, no. No, I've heard this myself. Now in fairness, so I've heard numerous rumours, and be me and Darren McCurry be quite tight. We get an odd phone call saying, "I'm calling down the years here with these transfer forms." And, no, there's no chance. I'd rather, rather play for more time than. than yeah, no, no joking. Like definitely, definitely not. No, no chance. Definitely, I'll be. My career will always be more bowling. Like, no um, chance. No, just okay. I'm happy enough um, to, to finish it off. Probably just before we do finish, um, just as our last topic, if you don't mind enlightening us, what's the plans for the future? You know, we, we know you're um, still obviously playing football mm-hmm. heavily with our bow. Mm-hmm. What's the plans both on and off the field? Um, plans at the moment. Uh, initial plans are look, get back on the pitch now Wednesday night with our bow. I'm not sure. You know, I know they say the county season's going first, but it's, it's split up in the air whether Tyrone or any county runs league games parallel to that. I don't know. I know that people have talked about split season and all, but are they going to be a pre-season tournament or stuff like that? We don't know. So the initial goal, get back in the pits, get playing, get into as many games as possible. I know that you know the short-term goal, or I suppose the short-term goal for me would be the next two or three years. Win a championship, that's the definite aim. Like, you know, I would see it as a... Definitely, I would see the career as a bit of a, a failure if you don't get at least one championship, especially with the tradition that we have as a, as a club in our bowl. We'll go through the 80s and 90s, numerous championships. You know, I haven't got over the line, got a couple of finals since that and semi finals and knocking on the door last year, you know, as well. Probably had them and gone, but didn't have them gone. Do you know what I mean? You know, we're two or three points up a few minutes to go. So it's, you know, Toronto's a serious hard championship anyway. You know, from, from an outsider looking in, it must be. Serious difficulty, just you know the volume of teams that have won it. You know. Well, there's been no back to back championship from 04 05. Mm-hmm. Carrick Moore's last team to do it. I think actually it was like 2018 or something, it was like the last nine winners. There's nine separate winners. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would definitely say it's the toughest. Championship it's a, it's, to it seems like a very tough championship. You know, there is other teams that you know, Slock Neil dominated for a few years, um, Scottstown dominated, Monaghan sort of thing, St. Gauls, Dick Carrigan are sort of winning a couple of Kilcoo. seems to go to coup for down, is right. Seems to be that way where Tyrone you can like you know, Tillic come up out of Division Two won a championship, Dungannon come out of Division Two won a championship, Aidan Dork come out of Division Two, who'll fancy a chance of beating anybody in Tyrone whenever they have three or four county men and on fire. Tyrone is a serious competitive championship and there's no games now that are a gimme. It used to be five, seven years ago you could have you know nailed on three points or two points in the league and said, Right, we'll set ourselves up for the championship, but it's a hard championship to win. I just hope we get one. I'd be happy with one. I would think about hanging them up if I got one. What's the, what's the plans off the pitch? Um, plans off the pitch. Uh, I hope to get into managing at some time in the career. Uh, don't know how I would go with that. I managed under 16s, pulled my hair completely out. A <laughs> uh, lot of learning to do that way. Uh, a few, hopefully a few media duties now to take care of uh, in the coming months with the inter-county season. So, Hopefully doing a bit of co-commentary and stuff like that uh, on the radio and different bits and pieces coming up, hopefully. So that's that's the plan off the pitch whenever the inter-county season gets going. So looking forward to that. That's that's the plan off the pitch and then see where that takes you. You don't know where them avenues can go, but that's that's the plan. I'd say you'd be very good at that because even talking to you off camera and even here, like your insights into the games and going into details. Mm-hmm. Different players, well, that's different it. Players. I, I do think it's a... 
a strong point. I, I do I analyse quite a bit. You know, it's not just a matter of watching the games and watching it and then turning it off when it's over and saying like, you know, you watch it, you watch it, and then you say to yourself, oh, and then you'll watch the Sunday game and you'll say, oh, you know, that's what happened, and then you're, you know, you're seeing who scored and who set up. And I enjoy that part of the game. You know, I enjoy that. I've yeah. actually heard that you're very into uh, even analysing our own games. No, you I, sit down and that's that's walk, walk through play. Like that's you, what we, you can talk other players that's, through. That's what it is. Like you know, that's like I like that side of the game. You know, I like that analysing it and showing boys and picking up my own things, you know, there's no no perfect game out there. So I like, I like most teams and most even club teams now, we, we, we have uh, apps and things where we have clips downloaded and I like watching that because you can always improve and there's always, you know, it's nice to see yeah. things you've done well, what works well, uh, analysing other teams. It's nice to see, you know, uh, um, what their strong strong points are and what their weaknesses are. I like, I like the media, I like that side of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think we'll just finish off um, on behalf of me and Enda we'd like to say a massive thanks for joining us this evening um, pleasure being here and just wish you the best of luck for obviously your season ahead with Arbo and everything that brings with it no bother wish you boys all the best with the podcast doing a great job thank yeah. you cheers mm-hmm. that's us awesome.